a YouTuber in UK made some derogatory comments regarding Andrew, which went viral, and uh, he replied straight away. And insulted all Muslims. Um, although I would gladly blow myself up. I'm just saying, if he really wants to prove it, do, do the right thing. <laughs> Let's see it's how just, it's hysteria. Let, let's see how about that life you really are. Then the Muslims blow themselves up. Now I should go blow myself up. After me converting to Islam, he made a piece on one of his podcasts saying that I'm not true in my conversion, and then insulted all Muslims. Then the Muslims blow themselves up. And I should go blow myself up. We should all blow ourselves up, making racist comments about about an entire religion as if that's somehow funny. Let me tell you something, my friend. And if True Jordy, if you're watching this, this is a message directly to you. There are certain times in life you need to know when to shut the <laughs> I'm Muslim, yeah. This is the Bismillah, alhamdulillah. Assalamu alaikum. Greetings of peace. Now, most of you by now have seen the video of Andrew Tate praying in a mosque. <laughs> and then the news shortly after that announcing that he was officially a Muslim. <laughs> this is all haram. No, this is haram, bro. Is, he, this is haram. Is Wait, I am Muslim? Let me I am Muslim, yeah. One who has submitted his or her will to the creator of the heavens and the earth, just like Moses, Jesus, Abraham, and the last and final messenger sent to mankind, Prophet Muhammad. But who was the brother praying next to him? Also, the man himself here, what cancelled? The legend is here, inshallah, his new home. I'm going to bring you a very special show soon to all the people who supported him his whole way. Bro, thank you very much, man. Thank you, brother. Glad to be here. And what impact did he have in his decision to accept Islam? Well, my next guest is an ex- professional MMA fighter turned entrepreneur and father. He competed in MMA across the world before retiring in 2010. So let's find all this out from the man himself, Tam Khan. Assalamu alaikum, my brother. Wa alaikum salam. How are you, my brother? Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. Thank you for joining us. It's a big pleasure, brother. I'm a big fan of what you do. I love the show and uh, I'm very humbled to be invited, to be honest. That's nice to hear. Alhamdulillah. Very nice. Thanks for accepting the, the invitation. All the way from UAE, huh? Yeah. Right now it's 8.40 p.m. in the UAE in Dubai. And uh, I'm in my gym uh, podcast room. Just yeah. So you, you're kind of like, you got to, you got to, that's pretty cool. You, you were, I'm here in the studio, but you have a gym also. I have a, I have a gym myself here in uh, Chicago. I teach also uh, mixed martial arts, uh, Gracie Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu at the same time. Yeah. Yeah, Marshall. That's my background too. Great yeah. jiu-jitsu. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm a I'm a huge advocate and fan of the original martial art, which led to the mixed martial arts. I'm a very good friend with Hoist himself, actually. Oh, that was my first uh, teacher who I got my blue belt from. <laughs> wow, Tor Torrance, California. I, I used to travel to Torrance, California. That's when Ho Horian was still there, uh, Kaike was still there, uh, Hoist was there, and then you know they split up. Yeah, of course, yeah. I, yeah. So that's where that's the roots. That's the true roots of. Brazilian, well, it was Gracie Jiu Jitsu yes. until it changed. I don't know copyright copyright uh, reasons. Yeah, and then I started training. I started going to uh, Brazil, training with Carlos Gracie Jr. Wow. And, uh, started with Gra Gracie Baja, and then we we now branched out to uh, Rizovic Jiu Jitsu. Yes, here. So hopefully we can have you. Uh, have you been to the states here in Chicago or anywhere? Not well, Chicago. I've been on the east. I've been to New York, Philly, and things, but I've never been. But inshallah, you know, I want to do a trip soon. I've got children. Maybe take them to a Disneyland, stop off. Maybe roll in your academy. Who knows? Oh, I got even. I got an even better idea. We're, we're going to hopefully, inshallah, soon be opening the Dean Center in Tampa. That's about an hour from Orlando. We need to do this for the future of our children, the future of our great country, the future of mankind. This is your brother Rathman Ibn Farooq, and I've got a very important message. Alhamdulillah, our brother Eddie is setting up the Dean Center, not just the Dean Show, 
but the Deen Center, a full Dawah Academy, a Masjid, a Dawah Center in America, the first of its type, the a, a groundbreaking project, and I want everybody as I'm supporting it I want everybody to support it so we can take the da'wah to the next level we need the Dean Center please support it so we'll have also okay. a, a, along with the uh, the mega da'wah center we'll have an athletic facility there also some jiu-jitsu so <laughs> yeah I'd love to visit it it'll be great alhamdulillah so we got a lot in common there so tell us now you uh what led up to this uh this uh prayer video that now you and andrew tate you're in a masjid you brought them into a mosque and you guys are side by side praying please talk to us about this yeah i mean what people don't know is me and andrew go back maybe 15 years andrew made his debut of fighting on one of my shows in essex a little town on the suburbs of uh the uk southeast and um so I've known him, I've known his coach, who's a Muslim, Bosnian Muslim, Amir. He came from, he was coached, and basically his mentor was a Bosnian Muslim, Amir. He's a very respected guy in kickboxing in their area called Luton. I'm from South and Nancy in Essex. So we knew each other, you know, like you have peers in the martial arts world. So then I moved to Dubai in 2008. And every time he'd come, we'd touch base, he'd reach out, let's catch up. You know, a lot of the guys from the UK, I'm kind of their go-to guy for mixed martial arts or catching up if you know someone it's like i'll oh, reach out to tam he's in dubai and like that we kept in touch and um then obviously he blew up we stayed in touch and i saw him become a viral youtube star and um the funny thing is when i used to watch him i used to agree with a lot of things i was like hey andrew like you know i love what you're saying like uh not everything but a lot of the gist to what he would say we kept as muslims relate to it was very different you know as you know for a non-muslim to speak in these things publicly and having no kind of bar or limit to what he said he had no fear so cut a long story short we're in dubai and um reached out we, we well he's here at, at the moment he's uh, based here right now so he he knows me trusts me you know we go way back and a lot of the people he meets he'll come to me and say who's this guy is he good because you obviously with his status he has to be a bit careful when you've got the people against you the powers that be but then um we were discussing we were sitting actually with steven seagal a few nights before and uh, I said, you know what? I'm going to take you. We need to go to Masjid one day because I want you to feel how that connection is between the creator and the creation. I can't explain. I said, just when you go in a Masjid quietly and you put your forehead to the floor, it's just something special. He said, bro, it's my, I would love to do it. I would love to. And it wasn't like, you know, I wanted to test his reaction. Some people be like, yeah, yeah, okay. You know, they don't want to or yeah. maybe one day. He was like, yeah, I'd love to. And then... Uh, he said to me, you know what, but I, I'm really, I want to convert soon anyway. He brought this up. I went, really? I go, martial arts, for sure. That's that's like the goal. So two, three days later, there was a, a UFC that night. It was in Abu Dhabi, uh, Islam Machayev against Charles Oliveira. We were going to go to the event, then we didn't, last minute, we just thought, he gets a lot of kids chasing. And we said, you know what, let's watch it in a local uh, fast food restaurant in Dubai. So that day I was waiting for him. I said, okay, let's go. Uh a certain time so we were supposed to meet then he messaged me uh where are you i'll pick you up and there was traffic i said you know what i'll drive and we'll meet there i've completely forgot at this point about the masjid he said uh no but we're gonna go to the masjid no i said you're right so i said okay you pick me up and uh, we'll go together so he reminded me this is no uh script he picks me up in the most his famous bugatti <laughs> what color is your bugatti so we go to a, a masjid and it's just after isha i think 30 minutes after Isha, so the, it's kind of quiet. People pray at Jamaat and they leave. There's uh, two guys in there, some local uh, workers or staff from the mall. It's connected to a mall. So I said, okay, he's all covered. I said, yeah, you have to have a uh, ablution when we pray. It's called wudu. Uh, you clean? He goes, yeah, I've showered anyway. So walk in, I said, look, okay, let's pray. He goes, yeah. I said, you don't mind? So I, obviously on the video, people are saying there's a gap. Obviously, the brother's first time, so yeah. I said, stop behind me. So, obviously, you make me, these things happen. And I just said, look, uh, try and focus looking downwards. I'm going to do the salah. Just, I'll pray for us. There's some things you won't know. I'll try and do it whispering it in such style, which is not normal, but just try and repeat that. And then uh, at the end, I'll turn to the right shoulder, say salam to one angel, then the left shoulder, and then we've prayed. So, we did two nuffle. Then again, I thought, you know what? Let's film this. I said, you know why? He goes, you sure? I said, yeah, let's film it because 
he goes, people will say, I said, it doesn't matter. I said, I'm going to film it because I just think you get so much stick. Let's put this up there to show it will influence young Muslim people who follow you. Too many kids want to be rappers. Too many kids want to be, I'm a gangster. This, Let's put something positive from someone they look up to. So there's a young uh, a cleaner or someone. I said, please, can you record this? So he held it with a two more nuffle. And, uh, and that's the video which went viral. And uh, I said, I'm going to post it. You don't mind? He goes, no, brother, go ahead. He goes, you're sure? I said, you're sure. I said, but I've got a feeling this is going to blow up. And I said, but it's for good reasons. I said, sometimes social media can be used uh, in a productive way. And in my opinion, there's many, many opinions on this. Oh, why did you do it? You shouldn't be recording yourself. Look, for me, social media is such a powerful tool. I like yourself. People watch you. To connect to the younger generation, people like yourself, like me, like Andrew Tate, you can't just have 75-year-old imams giving speeches. They can't relate to them. Mm -hmm. you know, there's, you've got to use different angles. And when Andrew Tate is so popular, really, like, from that, it just, a lot of, I had people messaging me. We were in tears watching this. We were crying. Thank you so much. It hit us. Brothers saying to me, you know, I feel ashamed to pray. I'm always out doing this and that. To watch him pray makes made me feel ashamed that I'm going to go to much of now. So... It is what we want. And then the next day, obviously, it went viral and I saw reposts from YouTube channels and things like that. And yeah, all of a sudden people think I'm a mufti. I'm not a mufti. I'm not a scholar. I'm just another brother. I, I'm trying to perfect myself also, you know. At what point in your life did you start to turn to take life more serious, asking the crucial questions? What's the purpose of life? Why am I here? At what point in your life did you really start to take Islam more, more serious? Honestly, I'll give respect to my mother. She raised me, alhamdulillah, in a good way. I've never dealt devil in alcohol, drugs. But of course, I wasn't practicing. I do other uh, activities which are frowned upon. But I always was God-fearing. But And I I wasn't praying five times. But call me a Juma Muslim, as you say. And I do the I fast Ramadan. I never miss a fast. But it was only in these times. I always think, yeah, tomorrow. Or, but then when I had children... I'd always be around the dean. I'd always watch brothers. I'd go to speakers' corner. I'd speak to brothers. I'd enjoy that. I I read a lot. But then I thought, uh, I'm not like I'd wake up to watch a UFC at 5 a.m. Mm -hmm. Imagine I'm not fudger. And so one day, when I had kids, like I always wanted children, and I I could not ever have children. And I'd pray to Allah and things like this. And I had a few circumstances in my life. I don't want to talk about trials and tribulations, where at that time it was the lowest point of my life. I turned only to the Creator. Nothing could help money, people, your so-called friends run away, local big men, local tough guys, local influencers. No one could help. So I prayed five times. I prayed all the, not only five times, sunnah, nafal, and I did the hajjud. And I remember one of my brothers, Shamsi in London, told me, he sent me some quote about hajjud. There's a quote or a hadith, how it, it's like a target. It's like an arrow that never misses a target. I was doing the, the dua after us, the hour before Maghrib on a Friday. I was doing everything and I really got into it. And uh, then I went to Umrah as well and everything just clicked. And subhanAllah, what I used to pray for in the hundred, wallahi, what I used to pray for, this image exactly, I looked back months later, it was there. I kept, it's, it's like just the power of the creation. It's like Allah answered my duas because, or prayers because he maybe saw my intention. And I made a promise, stuff like I know people say you cannot do that, but I promise I'll, I'll, I'll try my best to this day. I will never, ever knowingly go off, off the path. Like, from this day onwards, I'm going to make sure I do my best as a Muslim and however I can and never miss slight. And since then, God forbid, if one or once in a month, if I've overslept or my alarm, whatever happens, I, literally my day's ruined. So it took me time, but, um, and I've been on the internet since. And like, I'm trying to speak to brothers around me, people in the gym, the younger generation look up to me. If we have WhatsApp groups, I'm kind of like the Matawa. They don't send certain pictures. I tell them, listen, pray, do this. Why are you not praying? If they're all around me, I say, I'm praying. Come on, do that. Uh, do the wudu. Let's jump in. And it helps. And a lot of guys and a lot of people have started following suit, praying as well. Uh, we've had a few new reverts. So for me, like around Andrew, when he saw that, that I don't j joke in a certain way. If Salah comes, I walk out of a meeting, whether it's a government building, wherever, I'll pray on the street, I'll pray in the corner. Too. He says, you know what? I respect that. I respect someone who's with their religion or faith rather than a guy who will try and press someone to not be with it. So he, he's like that. He's, as you know, he's a man's man. He's not a guy who's very in, influenced by others. He'll speak mm. his mind. And the problem you get with a lot of Muslims will be, oh, Andrew, it'll be like this. We love you. We love what you say. But 
it's a lot of time. They'd rather sit there and take pictures than, you know? So mm -hmm. in life, we only have to impress one person or one entity, and that's the creation. And the rest, as you know, yeah. and I've got to that point in my life where I used to be vain into, I want to look like this. I want to be the strongest ego. SubhanAllah, when you get close to Allah, you have more patience, sabr, less ego. You don't backbite. Your whole character changes to the point where I think I've gone too soft, <laughs> too soft around my kids. You know, I've become, but in a nice way, you know. So um, I used to have aggression problems and this and that, but SubhanAllah, the power of Allah, and like us, we're discussing it's 2022 in November, social media on a peak, and we're sitting on a, in different countries discussing Islam. So it just goes to show the miracle of this beautiful religion that you're in this world, I'm in this world, we're around celebrities, but nothing will change, nothing will divert us. You could, I said to Andrew Tate once, I said, you could put a billion dollars to a real Muslim, any Muslim, whether he's praying or not, a billion dollars cash and say, denounce Islam, and 99% will never do it. But you could do that to any other religion they would for a billion dollars, and that's a lot of money, cash. And he goes, you're right, guys, no one will do it. So whether we sin or not, or whether people are off the path, that's the belief we have. And that's something you, that's the miracle, I guess, of the final uh, revelation, you know? That's uh, beautiful to see, you know, someone who's uh, not ashamed to to be one who is rep representing his dean and not sh shying away. People talk about football, basketball, UFC, everything under the sun, you know, conversations that lead here, there, anywhere. But, you know, you're bringing up, you know, proud to go ahead and talk about the way of life that the creator set down for all of mankind. And it's uh, it's really nice to see that. There's a, a video here also I wanted to share that you guys walk into a institute of education yeah, here everyone. i'm glad he's here you know as brother as i told him once you're with us it's brother yeah. his family it's not well, we were invited you know, after that went viral things, you know? yeah. we we're invited yeah. by the muslim this well, is kind of the ministry no we have ministry of sport so ministry of education there's nothing yeah. about religion but the there's a little bit of complaining that most people have been so by the shake this is where reverts go you'll be given from a book of guidance how to pray and uh just good guys and what I love about Brother Andrew is he gets invitations every day. My phone is nonstop every day. Millionaires, captain, this, that, businesses want to bring him. He's literally like, bro, I don't want to go. I really want to relax. I'll, if it's business, we can discuss. But every time we've been invited to a Islamic center or a masjid, without a doubt, he just says what time and he goes. Mm. And you see him, you see himself. I can't explain. You have the aura, the sunglasses, the top G, aggressive. But when he's in these places, well, you see Noor in his face. And it's like a relation, he relates to it. And, the, and it lights up the brothers. We walked into another one on Flag Day last Thursday to a Muslim community center. And it's where they have speeches on reverts. He walked into a room. They made him stand up and ask why he reverted. And you could see the faces of. Wow. So th this is happening uh, not just this time, but this is also, there's more. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, wow. The one I'll post soon, it was last Thursday. And it was really nice because it was a class full of reverts. They go to learn about Islam, study understand the five pillars regarding how do you do umrah hajj and i think they were learning the steps of umrah and we walked into the class and the speaker said uh, brother would you mind talking for a few minutes we got off spoken the reverts were so happy it, it made them feel but maybe some you know feel a bit nervous or can i do this and when they saw him they felt calm and like i said i reverted someone in my gym uh, a guy who trains here last week from holland Listen to my brother, I've like, got a few questions, and I'm just worried. My parents, you know, they're very anti Islamic and they're from Holland. And this, that. I said, Brother, just do it for Allah, don't have to tell them for now, just do it because tomorrow is never guaranteed. Let's just do it and step by step. And if they say things, don't argue with them. If I wasn't Muslim, I'd have the same ideas. Some Muslims don't do us very. I said, Say and explain to them this is not the religion, but the people are different. We can't judge on this. And uh, he felt calm, he reverted, and that day he felt so good. We had dinner after. So, alhamdulillah, I'm not sure whether it was Andrew, but since then, it has more pros than cons, I sh should I put it, you know? So, did he end up taking his, his official uh, shahada? Did he take it at this institute or was it with you it before? Before. That, before. It the same day, that same day, but it was privately done. He did it. Mashallah. They're actually in UAE, you get certification for. Um, for becoming a Muslim, it's like a thing they do in the UAE. In the UK, it's different. You say Shahada, and you know you have your witnesses, and Allah knows best. But uh, so, but he wanted. He said, "Can you send us your passport copy, and we'll get this done for you?" So yes, please, I'd love it. So they're going to make him an official certificate of being a revert to Islam under the UAE government. So wow, yeah. So Subhanallah, it was a beautiful, and they gave him a a beautiful uh, 
prayer mat, Quran. He's got guidance books. We've got a few WhatsApp groups with some well good Dawahs in London and in the UAE. So, inshallah, he's in good hands. I hope this is not something hard to comprehend. Islam is a the natural way. It connects with the human nature, the uh, instinct that we're all the fitra, you know, the inclination. Right. It's it's not something that you have rocket science to figure out. Worship the creator, not the creation. Be a good human being. You know, live upon these morals that God Almighty Allah has sent. And then we have the living miracle, the Quran. If anyone is sincere, takes a analytical scientific approach, comes at it sincerely, and they're asking to be guided by the creator, they're going to see the truth, just like Andrew Tate did. It's very yeah. straightforward. It's not like you're trying to convince someone that God is a man or that, you know, some of these strange beliefs that are out there, these man-made religions. Islam is clear, it's pristine. The Tawheed, the pure monotheism, is something that's easy to digest. Yeah, it is. And I think what he respected a lot was, like you said, how Islam doesn't bend its rules. We don't try and adapt to society. We have our set ways, and that's it's timeless. Yes, we respect the laws of the land as a prophet told us, but if anything is going to influence our religion, then we step in. So, unlike other religions, like he says, and obviously his delivery is a little bit different, but he says things like having a trans or a Christians or priests who allow homosexuality, for example. We know clear-cut in certain books is forbidden. It doesn't make them not Muslim. If there was a Muslim person who's homosexual, it doesn't make them a non-Muslim. It means you're sinning, can't control your pleasures or your desires. Same as way as a, a Muslim who commits zina, like a man. Just control your desires, you know? So Islam has sets of rules. And, and I said to him, like, what, UAE or in the Middle East, you could leave your phone or a pot of gold. Sometimes, brother, in, in insane summer, it's so hot here. You have to, if your car's outside, you have to leave the uh, engine on. Imagine doing that, Lana. I leave my engine on, going to a meeting for 30 minutes, my car where the keys are inside, AC's running, and I come back, it's not touched. That goes because that all stems from Islamic kind of ruling, respect, the laws of the land. And I think if the West, I'm not saying bring Sharia, I'm saying if they adopted some ways of that, it would be a happier place. And he identified that. He said, look, the West is upside down. We work hard for watches or material things. You can't even wear them in London now. Mm -hmm. People talk to you. So what kind of society is that? You pay taxes, the police have no power. People are like he said. He's literally said you can have, you see people fornicating on beaches in public. Everyone, it's just right. wild way. He goes Dubai. I like the system. He goes I like where if you have a partner or your wife, she's safe. Your kids can run in a mall. I, I can have my kids run around, make a mess, and come back. No threat of pedophilia or these grooming. You know, and that all stems from Islam. Whether yeah. we're not talking about leadership or if it's clear cut Sharia law, we're not saying that. But we're saying these values and rules come from Islam. And society in general is a better place. And now you're seeing Dubai, it's the hub of the world. People are moving, Westerners, uh, all of Europe, Germany, Switzerland, you name it, they're all coming here. It's because the way of life is the better. Mm -hmm. So um, I think that's a testament to the religion itself. And it's like in the early 2000s, unfortunately, when that incident happened in 9-11, Islam was at the rock time bottom. The world was against it, the invasions of Afghanistan, Iraq. But I think... It's kind of a full circles come because people are fed up with the West at the moment. And it's not just Muslims, it's non-Muslims. They're, they're fed up of agendas being pushed on their kids or society or saying a certain pronoun. They're thinking, okay, agree or not, but don't push it on us. Like we don't come to you and say, become Muslim or do this. We don't. We say, this is our tradition. If you like it or not, or follow us. So even non-Muslims, atheists, they're all on the same boat. So that's why I think you're seeing a big increase in reverts. And I think it all, like it's promised to us in our books as well, like Islam will always prevail. You can shun us, you can say this back, but I say we're backward, but the message is it's a miracle. Mm -hmm. And when someone hears the message, unless they're not educated enough, I think they'll always come to Allah because I think we're all educated people. We're well studied. I, I, at a time in my teens, I look at all the religions, I looked at everything. I wanted to say, okay, let's test. And subhanAllah, you always come back to Islam, the miracle of the Quran, miracle of the hadith, the prophet's sayings, things he predicted, what's happening now. And I, we talked about that to Andrew. I said, imagine. He said, there'll be a time when the barefoot Bedouin Arab will be competing over the highest buildings. Imagine that those times Persia or Romans were known for buildings. The Arabs had nothing. Yeah. Now, look at, Dubai, look at the Middle East. Or, clear prophecies, yeah. Clear prophecies, which you could not predict 50, 1,400 years ago. So, no way. Or the description of the fetus or...
mm-hmm. things like this in the embryo of the Quran is just the embryo. It's scary, and like, not scary in a good way. And uh, when people have an open heart and are willing to listen, I don't believe there's any way to go against it, in my opinion. And I think the only people who do have agendas or they have businesses which profit are going against it. That's the only reason why not. So, alhamdulillah, like, it, it really made me happy to see. I'd rather see a brother like Andrew become a Muslim than me having all the success in business. I'd rather give that up and see someone like, you know, it makes me more happier because I know his influence will be key. And I just want to say one thing. I don't want everyone to say he's not going to become a mufti or scholar overnight. He's not going to be that. So don't look to him for Islamic dawah and don't say, okay, he did this and that because he's new to it and it's going to take time. So a lot of people will send me comments and I see messages. Oh, he has a cigar here or he's there. Guys, we have to relax. The guys changed from one opposite, a, mu- a multi-millionaire, <laughs> popular celebrity you call it from this to this majority of us would fail it's not easy you know brother like that industry is so different so and he's not claiming to be that he's just saying i am a muslim and i respect the religion so let him be and step by step it will come with time and i think the only worry i have is the pressure of muslims bombarding him with you did this wrong i saw this video i saw this that's the thing so but as long as we can back off and show support. I think, inshallah, I can see no problem. Uh, it's interesting that uh, I'm going to sh- share this clip that he's already inviting people to uh, look into Islam. You know, if you got yourself a nice Islamic wife, she wouldn't <laughs> cheat on you. She'd cook for you. She'd look after you. She wouldn't have an OnlyFans. You know, most of the problems you're facing currently with women can be solved by Islam. Really? <laughs> I just told you why. Wait, they actually she, don't cheat? She'd have, she'd have decency. She'd cover up. She'd be God fearing. If she miss, her family would also keep an eye on her. So her family would tell her to obey her husband. She'd want your children. She'd look after you. Islamic women are the best. They understand that the best way to serve God is to also serve their husbands. Where do I get one at? So most of your problems could be solved. Where do I get not, Where do I get an Islamic woman? At? You must become a Muslim yourself first, my friend. <laughs> and and being a Muslim is not easy. There's a lot to learn. It's a long journey. Even I'm not a scholar. I'm learning. There's a lot to learn about how it works and the true word of God and the Quran and learning Arabic, etc. is not easy. But if you come to Dubai, you can begin the journey and you can talk to the same people I've talked to. And then halas. Did he get that? For, did you teach halas? <laughs> halas, yeah. He's got a few new lingo. It's funny. Shaitan is his favorite. He says uh, the Western shaitan. He doesn't say matrix. He says shaitan now. Yeah. <laughs> so that's very uh, nice to see. He's already, uh, and he, he corrected the guy. He said that right away the person connected with what he was saying. He said, where is she at? He said, no, no, you have yeah. to first become a Muslim. <laughs> yeah, and we, we did a podcast and we spoke about, we said, if a man and woman live by the values of Islam and respect the laws and live by that, you will never have a problem in marriage. I don't, my wife, don't, many people won't. We'll say we do, we don't. But if you truly live by the principles of the Quran and Sunnah, and live by that, and you both respect each other, I think you will never have a problem in life. Honestly, your only problems will be calamities with family or deaths. But how many of us can say we do? And it's a beautiful thing, the respect of a wife, the respect of the husband, the duties, the the roles. None of us really go by it. But if we truly do, we know we cannot raise our voice at our wife. She cannot do the same. We cannot. And then it becomes more a peaceful house. The kids are happier. So in a way, he's right. If you live, what he meant is if you live by that kind of, uh, guidebook for me in life you have no problems i really truly believe you're more content whether you make money or not your content isness is different it's does am i obeying allah enough am i getting myself inshallah to heaven am i raising my kids the right way and this is your um goal in life rather than before it will be different things and of course we want to make money and survive because we want to give shelter to our family and make sure they're okay and education's good but Truly, it changed me in a way where I don't chase materialistic things. I don't care for it. I'm literally like, you know, in the gym, T-shirt, shorts, uh, wherever the way I pray. And my life, honestly, it stems around being around my family, kids, raising them, taking my girls sometimes to Juma. They're only three, but just to let them feel it. And not push it, just to let them feel, look, this is our this is our beautiful way of life. I don't even like using the word religion. And so while it's a great thing, and for someone from me, born and raised in the UK, living in Dubai, which they call the flashiest place. And I've been around, you name it, the Mayweathers, the so-called celebs. I've been in this kind of lifestyle. I've seen the private jets also, yachts. I, UFC fighters, I've trained with them. I used to professionally fight TV. I've even acted in a, in a movie, imagine, with Jackie Chan. But 
it means nothing. It's it's so minute and it's nothing. The main the, there's no feel like I was in when I can't explain when I went to Umrah in Mecca the feeling of praying and bowing and put my head to the floor and in complete silence with like thousands of other people. That feeling, honestly, it was like walking to arena of a fight times ten. My heart was pounding. And when I first saw the Kaaba for the first time, that feeling I'll never forget. SubhanAllah. It's, I cannot explain it. It's superb. And if every Muslim should really, uh, every Muslim who's prayed their whole life looking at these Kaabas on the prayer mats or on the internet, when you first go, wow, like that changed my life forever. And inshallah, I, I hope I'm blessed to go many more times and do Hajj as well. There's that picture of you guys and you, you mentioned you guys were with uh, Steven Seagal. Yeah, how how was he taken to uh, Islam at all, or have you guys had a discussion about it? We, yeah, we Steven Seagal. Similarly, I know there's a stigma about him in the West, and he had a lot of uh, controversy around him. But he's honestly a nice guy, very straightforward, very old school kind of alpha male, and he respects it. He says he lives in Russia, and Russia, if you're going to get a country which is close to a Muslim state, and I don't know if anyone, I'm not saying about their political alliances i'm saying russian orthodox christians are very similar in a way uh the households the respect they have for the husbands um the, they don't like entertaining certain kind of agendas being pushed in their country is very very similar i've been to moscow many times so he's based there and he likes that system and he when we speak he agrees with everything he he understands and he understands why he's muslim and he says I understand. I've been to the West. I've been to America. They've killed religion. They, they're trying to put religion in a drawer. Wow. And those religions have molded to it. And they want basically the dollar or democracy. I don't know what they're trying to put, uh, push the agenda. But they, religion, keep it at home. Keep it during, I don't know, their Christmas or their Sunday gospel. But it's not for society. Whereas he he thinks otherwise. And uh, yeah, he respects a lot. And um, honestly, I... There's not many people I've been around in my life. When you speak to them around it, they don't respect it. Uh, there's many who even, inshallah, I mean, uh, Andrew's brother respects it a lot. Inshallah, one day, hopefully, he's a very good guy as well himself, Tristan. Very straightforward, good guy. Um, they've been raised well, you can see. And you never know, inshallah, because uh, when you have an older brother who you respect and look up to as well, and they go a certain way. I know usually the younger brothers kind of follow in path. So who knows? But um, I think... Uh, what he's done is very good for our younger youth in a way. I'm not saying he's going to be a role model because our role model should always be the prophet, peace be upon him. But these young guys who I feel feel ashamed to be Muslim, want to impress too much or it's prayer time, I can't pray in front of them. This girl might think I'm this or this guy. He's putting a shame to that. So that's that's what I like. And when you see him on podcasts, whether it's the rapper 6 9 or whoever, he always speaks about Islam. And yesterday a YouTuber in UK made some derogatory comments regarding Andrew, which went viral. And uh, he replied straight away regarding defending the religion and defending uh, Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, And now, after me converting to Islam, he made a piece on one of his podcasts saying that I'm not true in my conversion and then insulted all Muslims. Then the Muslims blow themselves up and that I should go blow myself up. We should all blow ourselves up, making racist comments about, uh, about an entire religion as if that's somehow funny. Let me tell you something, my friend. And if True Jordy, if you're watching this, this is a message directly to you. There are certain times in life you need to know when to shut the There are certain things which are not funny. Certain things that are not beyond reprisal. You don't sit and insult a man's religion. Just like you don't insult a man's entire company and the people who work for him, that's one thing. But to insult my religion and the religion of billions of people across the planet, making ignorant jokes about f***ing ourselves up, thinking that it's gonna go without consequence, you're gonna learn very quickly, my friend, that that was a mistake. These things I like, he's straight on it. He doesn't like it, so he takes it to heart, which is a sign, you know? Mm, beautiful. So there's uh, one key thing I want to take away from this. I love how you, and that's trying to set a good example as far as never leaving the Salat. We know as, as Muslims, that's the most important thing right after the Shahada, La ilaha illallah, that there's nothing worthy of worship except the creator of the heavens and earth. Muhammad is the messenger. And then you start making the Salat, praying just like Jesus prayed and all the other prophets. That's the way they humbled themselves and they pray to the creator of the heavens and the earth. And you are holding on firmly to that. So inshallah, the sh young Shabab, the young ones out there and people who are scared, right? They have this inferiority complex. They can see someone like you uh, who's in the position around a lot of different famous people and uh, wherever you're at, you're in a meeting, it's time to make Salat. You're out of that meeting and you're going to make Salat. So inshallah, 
is considered another great example. And uh, and what you just said about making this uh, this umrah, this hajj that you were at, the power of that. So this can motivate some people also to to jump on this. Sure. I mean, my next uh, thing I uh, I want to take uh, Andrew to do umrah. That's the next goal right now. See, things are, it's no excuse, but it's very difficult. You, the brother can't drive somewhere if they spot his car, we're flogged. Came to the gym, he can't leave. Malls, and I've never experienced this, I'm not like this, but I've had Khabib and many guys come around, but I've never seen this, it's in a way, scary. So his life has totally changed, and before he reverted. So he cannot really experience some things in public. So, for example, if you go to Jumma or the Masjid, you have to really run out. And it looks rude, people think it's arrogance, it's not get in the car because when a hundred few hundred people want a picture it, it becomes commotion mm -hmm. a lot of people go oh he's really he's not rude it's just i'm the one that's trying to force him so when it calms down a little bit i'd love to take him umrah because uh obviously people recognize it could get a little ridiculous but inshallah that's the goal and also like you said about salah the only difference between us and non-muslim is salah I, you know so i mean without that you are nothing and it keeps you in check when you pray the more you pray, you've got. Well, you, you you tend to not want to do something crime. You say, "Oh, I've got my group. Oh, that feel guilty." And to the youngsters out there, there's nothing to be ashamed. Of. We should be proud of what we are, the beautiful religion. And if you want a role model, read the stories of the Prophet peace be upon him. Read the stories of the Sahaba, um, the other prophets. They they'll make their hairs on your neck go mm -hmm. up. I mean, the warriors we had, Khalid bin Walid, stories of him, uh, Hazrat Ali. I mean, when they truly know this, you will not want another role model. And uh, calamities whatever when you read the stories i used to have stress and my brother said read about prophet ayub and then you'll see what uh pressures you have and i said oh my god i'm i'm stressed about this and prophet ayub what he went through or each prophet the calamities they went and who are we they were getting tortured for spreading the message so we could be where we are and we're in a world where we're not going to be tortured if you were to pray on the middle of times square no one's going to say anything to you and you're in the usa i could go in the middle of uh, hyde park london no one says a thing we have no excuse most business in the West, they'll say, okay, you can have time out to pray. Exactly, yes. So there's no excuse. We cannot say we're, we're in some communist state of the early 80s in Russia. There's no excuse. So as Muslims, if you truly are Muslim, and I don't want to sound like a, con a hypocrite, but if you're not praying, why why do you claim? Like, at least do the basics. We're not saying be a Dawi or do the basics, pray. If you respect our mothers, we respect our grandmothers, our fathers. Why? They gave us birth. What about the Creator? Who created them gave us heavens the earth these eyes these noses lips our bodies uh everything we can't even give five minutes out of our day so that's what used to make me think you know i'd wake up for ufc but i couldn't lift my quilt cover for fudger so now you know subhanallah i've become a body clock i don't even an alarm really i i know when and it just naturally i wake up so alhamdulillah i hope it inshallah i'm always on the path and to the end of my Amen. days and I hope my kids follow the suit and inshallah I think we all I hope we all uh stay on that path because for me it's just it's the truth and we don't understand the blessing we, we're too disguised myself I can't talk also by the seductions of the West and these tools and movies or whatever but we don't understand we're here for a test and the test is to inshallah get into Jannah and what we'll have there will flatten what we think is good here and when you truly understand Islam and read, you'll see that there's nothing else that matters. That's so beautiful. All this, uh, you know, putting things in perspective. I want to thank you. And it reminds me of the hadith uh, with the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He said, just guiding one person to the deen is better than everything in this dunya. So may God Almighty Allah reward you for, uh, for helping to facilitate this and, and continue to share the message like you've been doing. It's amazing. And this is great advice for, for the people out there listening and look forward to, inshallah, meeting with you one day soon, yeah. either inshallah, in Chicago. Please, please, anytime come to Dubai, we pleasure. We'll hold a seminar. Anytime you want your family, please, it's our pleasure. And inshallah, I'd love to come there. And uh, hopefully things have calmed down. We'll bring Brother Andrew too. We'll have a good catch up. That's beautiful. I look forward to it. Jazakallah. Thank you, my brother. Jazakallah. Salam alaykum. Take care, my brother. We've been told that uh, they're out to kill us all. Assalamu alaikum brothers and sisters. We went to the streets to ask Americans about Islam. Here's what they said. Do you know anything about Islam? No. Do you know anything about Islam? No, sadly. Do you know anything about Islam? Uh, not really. Do you know anything about Islam? No, I'm sorry. <laughs> Do you know what Islam means? 
Islam? Uh, no. We've been told that uh, they're out to kill us all. That's what you've been told, that Muslims are out to kill you all? Well, that's what they say on TV. Anything. I know it's in the Middle East, isn't it? Well, then you're going to have four wives. Brothers and sisters, as you can see, there are so many Americans who don't know about Islam. We need your help to change that. Help us to build the Dean Center, the first mega dawah center in America. Click the donate right now. May God Almighty Allah reward all of you. I cannot leave without giving you a gift. If you're not yet Muslim and you tune in to see what these Muslims are talking about and you like a free copy of the Quran, go ahead and visit thedeanshow.com. We'll take care of the postage and everything and get it delivered to you. And if you still have some questions about Islam, call us at 1-800-662-4752. We'll see you next time. Until then, peace be with you. Assalamu alaikum.